<clears throat> Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototopus Mystery. This will be part 355, <clears throat> and we're <clears throat> looking at a lesson titled, After the Gathering. <clears throat> we've been focusing on the uh, <clears throat> judgment, the beginning of sorrows, and the gathering. We want to continue to see what the indications of scriptures are for those <clears throat> that will participate after the gathering. Scripture indicates <clears throat> after receiving their inheritance, the angel stars will go on to become teachers of all that belong to the Lord. Matthew 24, verse 47. Verily I say unto you, that you shall make him ruler over all his goods. So this is saying, when they qualify, they're going to be put in authority over all that the Lord has created. It's unfallen. Right. You answered my question. I was thinking about the... Um The choice and best of those who live on those who drink water, etc., who are in you know, various dimensions, they're on for them. Are they taught at the same point that the yes. answer is yes? Okay. So, what I mean is at the same time. Yes, yeah. yes. It already goes to everybody. So the angels will not just be teaching the churches, right. the communities. They're going to be teaching in a pluralistic capacity over all the unfallen creation, preparing the creation for events to come. And you've proven to have given us. Um, a vignette, if you wish, of a teaching session and what it may look like, a number of Protocus priests preaching, teaching a multitude at the same time. Does the multitude include those who are righteous but not humans? Well, <clears throat> they're going to be a different function of teaching. Yeah, look at it from a human perspective because in eternity, teaching is comprised of manifestation of an image, reality, that an individual can take and comprehend. John <clears throat> wasn't taught from a blackboard. Mm. He was taught by taking an image and projecting it into his consciousness mm -hmm. so that he could perceive exactly what was taking okay. place. Yes. So, what you just now said works if the individual being taught has a prehistory of that type of image and then recognizing the image familiar with that process is that the way it's going to be mm -hmm. okay every creature <clears throat> will have the capacity to comprehend imaging right so whether they're familiar or not familiar, the human order exactly the, the the angel can put into their mind whatever he wants to put in. i know that's true for my own experience yes. Yes. because you are <clears throat> you're manifesting familiarity to the being in the way in which he's composed mm -hmm. to comprehend <clears throat> because this is god doing it therefore god knows exactly what needs to be done to impart truth yes. to all the creation This is the next principle. Scripture indicates angels, and for that matter, all the life forms in the unfallen creation have little understanding of God's master plan. And we see examples of this. Turn to Zechariah, the first chapter, verses 12 to 13. <coughs> Zechariah, first chapter, verses 12 to 13. <coughs>
here, the Lord dispatches an angel to give Zechariah a message of coming judgment, which is basically what the, all the angels do. They understand short-term events that are going to take place. But in a long, protracted perspective, they don't comprehend. <coughs> 12 to 13. <coughs> then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these three score and ten years? Notice he's talking to the pre-incarnate Jesus because he calls him Lord of hosts. So it's not YHVH. <coughs> and the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So he's giving him a certain amount of information, but he's not giving him comprehensive information. <coughs> he's giving him information for a particular period in which the angel <coughs> goes and gives to Zechariah. <coughs> after the angel has given him, given him initial information about a judgment that's going to come, <clears throat> the angel expresses his ignorance, he doesn't understand the overall purpose, how long is this going to be, and the Lord gives him a certain amount of information which comforts him and then he takes it to Zechariah. So Zechariah gets a misconstrued conception of what the Lord actually said? No. <clears throat> he got the original understanding. It was the angel that didn't understand the totality of it. Because right. it's the angel that goes and asks, well, how long are you going to... After the angel gives Zechariah that the judgment is going to fall on Jerusalem, then he goes and asks, well, Lord, how long are you going to continue to have this indignation against <clears throat> Israel? And the Lord gives him information about a time in which the judgment will subside. <clears throat> yes? Is this a... a continuous from beginning to end way that the Lord deals with Zechariah? No. This is one instance which has to do with an angel who <clears throat> was curious as to finding out what was going beyond the information he had been given. Right. Which gives us an insight that the, the creation does not know the plan of God. Yeah. It's all only reserved for the sons. Yeah. Understandably so. First Peter, the first chapter, verse twelve. We're going to come back to this later on too. First Peter, because <clears throat> it's a pivotal passage. Unto whom it was revealed, talking about the prophets, and not only unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you. In other words, the prophets received revelation, they passed it on to the apostles, the apostles passed it on to the churches. <clears throat> With the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels, angels, desire to look into. So the whole hierarchy of angels from the dawn stars all the way down <coughs> are in more or less ignorance of what God's plan and that's the plan is. <coughs> we know far more than they do. And as we continue we're going to see <coughs> just more or less how much in the dark they really are. Well, Josie, okay, so now we know the, pr the, the principle of Faith cometh by hearing, by hearing the word of the Lord. So is it because they don't hear the Lord? Is why they don't have understanding, knowledge, or other? No, it's not given to them to know. Okay. They're servants. Yeah. It's like saying, does the manager tell his employee what the game plan here that the board of directors is going to do? No. Okay. They just carry out what they're told to do. <coughs> Scripture indicates... <coughs> The authority of the Prototokist teachers will enable them 
to sit on the high council of God in the sides of the north. From there, they will instruct and dispatch angels to prepare for the events to come. Mm -hmm. I believe once the <coughs> Prototokos re <coughs> retreat from their estates to receive their inheritance, they're going to be elevated to the high council of God, the place in which now the hierarchy of the angels run the creation. People like the Watchers, the Holy Ones, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, they'll be superseded by the teachers on this high council. Mm. And from there, they're going to dispatch everybody else who will be below them in authority after they are taught to dispense, dispense information to their sectors of the creation. But the watchers, holy ones, the dawn stars, etc., will continue to sit on the high council, just they're subservient to the sun. That's what I'm understanding you today. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> in eternity, unlike in fallen Adamic reality, in eternity, wisdom is the thing that determines your position. Godly wisdom. Those that have the majority of it are going to proceed to inhabit the highest order of administration. Turn to Daniel, the 10th chapter. We see some examples of this. Daniel 10, verses 11 to 14. And he, the angel, said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. But when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Mm -hmm. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Who sent them? The High Council of the Saints. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who heard this? Who heard Daniel's word? God. <coughs> what you're looking at here is <coughs> an example <coughs> of plurality of existence. When the Prototokos teacher comes into his authority, he has access to past, present, and future. This happened 3,000 years ago, from our time. But from eternity, <coughs> it won't happen until you and you and I receive authority to dispatch the Goodness. angels to give the creation the information about God's master plan. Because they don't have it now. Sure. They won't have it sure. until they receive it from the sons of God. But the, although you said God heard it, everybody in the... Primary. There we go. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm sorry. Everyone in the primary creation is it. Yeah, but it's directed at God. Sure. Dan is fasting three weeks mm. for the Father. <clears throat> but in this instance, it's probably the Son because the Son has all authority. Right. And so the Son <clears throat> has already dispatched the inheritance to his brethren. So at this point, the brethren here, they dispatch this angel. Verse 13, But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. So the angel takes a deviant course, comes down and gets captured. Twenty-one days. <coughs> and Michael is dispatched to uh, <coughs> break him free, so he can go down and give Daniel the information. 
Verse 14. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. But yet the vision is for many days. And later on you will find that that's actually not for Daniel, it's for the Prototokos. Yes. Okay, we got to back up a little bit. Who sent the angel to give a to give Daniel the answers before he gets caught? Okay. Well, that's interesting because I did I didn't know that he's going to get caught. Otherwise, you know, I would said, you know, take the left road or take the right road or something. You dispatched the angel. The angel chose to take the course that. <coughs> causing problems. Okay, see the whole thing was I was going to say God. Well, God knows he's going to get caught. But if it's YHVH, then it's a different story. No, no. It's not God. God given all administration to the Son was given it to the qualifying teachers that now sit on the High Council. Daniel is praying to God, who hears the prayer, and says <clears throat> to the son, we're going to answer his prayer. The son says to his brethren, dispatch an angel to go down to give him an answer for his brethren, the teachers. The teachers dispatch an angel. They don't have to tell him every nook and cranny. They give him the information. He makes a decision which way he's going to go, which is a wrong decision, made a wrong turn. So, the brethren dispatch another angel to go and release it. An, an archangel. Yes. Yes. What we're given is an insight into activity that's going to take place at the time that the teachers ascend to their rightful authority. They're doing what they've been called to do from eternity. So they're both archangels. Not necessarily. We don't know that. Is the first one not um, Gabriel? We don't know that. The one who was withstood. We don't know that. He doesn't say that. Mm. He could be. He might not be. The reason I'm saying that is because in verse 21, and I know this is a, a sidebar, the implication is that the angel speaking refers to there are only two that hold this information. One of them is my legal prince. Yes. Who would the other one be? <coughs> well, it wouldn't be him. <coughs> him. The angel, because he couldn't withstand him. He got in prison. So, so if he's an archangel, he'd be like Michael. He okay. wouldn't be in prison. So therefore, he couldn't be the one who's holding the no. scripture of truth. No. no. So literally, when the angel is dispatched, <coughs> it's not a ministering servant angel. It's a high order angel to, to give... Ansel, or sure. Daniel, the answer. Sure. And he gets caught for mm -hmm. three weeks. Yep. Richard, I've got to come back to this point. Sure. In verse 20, this angel, who may or may not be the Archangel Gabriel, mm -hmm. is telling Daniel that he has to fight the Prince of Grecia after he fights the Prince of Persia. Mm -hmm. He then, in the next verse, 21, tells Daniel that he will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth, the understanding to be the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and there is none that holdeth with me, him who is speaking, in these things, but Michael, your prince. Mm -hmm. How is it possible that the same person who has been telling uh, Daniel all of these things can hold the scripture of truth? Well, <clears throat> notice what he says, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. What's the scripture of truth? The book of Revelation. Exactly. Mm. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things but Michael your prince. In other words, so he's saying him and Michael have gotten the lump sum total of the highest amount of revelation knowledge. But that doesn't mean that him is or he is an archangel. No. Just he was chosen. He's, he's for talking that about revelation knowledge. Because he's talking about I'm going to show you these things okay. and it's only me and Michael that have the ability at this point right. to give you this information. Right. It's just curious to me that somebody who is not on the level of an archangel would have revelation knowledge. Well, it would be dependent upon who, who he is, why he was created, okay. what his duties okay. are. 
any number of things which we're not given here. Right. But I do not believe it's an archangel because okay. if an archangel, it takes an archangel to free him up, then right. he wouldn't have gotten prison. Okay, that's a great point. Hey, Mr. Smith. Okay, so it's a glorified saint that sends, that tells them to send an angel. Okay, glorified yes. saint. Yes. And then... <clears throat> well, let me rephrase this. He's not glorified yet. He's still an angelic star. Been who has authority to teach the creation. Right. So therefore, this is happening between well, the end of the gathering and the rapture. If he's not glorified, yes. that's the period of time. Because he's, he's giving him the information about the tribulation period. Sure. Mr. Jones, I'm feeling like this particular scenario is going to happen. It does. It's really yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking besides this. Mm. We're given this to be prepared for this. Sure. Exactly, that's why we're doing this lesson. That's why I said to Daniel, look, mind your own business, it's not for you, right? Just write it down and record it for later on. You're looking These at your future here. This is you. You know, I've thought about this particular point. As we study more and more, we come into scripture and verses where it becomes, at least it becomes clear to Easier me. Easier to identify. That we will be involved in these things. That's, yes. There's no doubt in my that's mind. That's what it's that. for. Yeah. yeah. The scripture says, all things are for your sakes. Praise the Lord. Now, it's ain't square. It doesn't, you know, it's not going to be something that rolls down easily. But <clears> if you're willing to put in the time to study, you'll be richly rewarded. Reward. Amen. So, Mr. Jones, with our lesson and our conversation about what we're going here, Josie, I don't see that ever happening under my watch. Don't see what happened the angel getting caught when he's been sent to dispatch a, a, a message. I'm going to know it. So I'm going to say, hey, don't take the left road, don't go straight go this way. I'm going to tell them, you know, because I know everything. But you don't at that point. You just no. said he's not. You're not glorified yet. You haven't reached the I will know as I am known. But I have the example right here in front of me, and I, what am I supposed to forget this? No, what you're going to do is what you're led to do by the Spirit. And the Spirit is leading everybody from the Lord on down to answer Daniel's prayer. That's it. So if he says the Spirit, even though he is not glorified at this point, the Spirit knows because the Spirit is God and he has no beginning and no end. Yes. The Spirit can tell him, look, the guy you sent is probably not the best guy to, to, to do the job. Do this, 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 but you this. notice what it says, we're forgetting. He says there's only two of us that have the ability to give you what you okay, need, okay. me and Michael. Okay. That's why he sent. Right. And in that respect, you're focusing on meeting Daniel's need through the angel, who you have invested all this revelation knowledge okay. in. That you're not sense, thinking no. about telling him Which way to go. Sure. You're thinking about, you're giving and trusting him with a knowledge of the Father's master plan. You put a lot of time, quote unquote, energy in investing this individual mm. who gladly goes. And he may, you, you're not controlling him, you're directing okay. him. He makes a decision on where to go and what to do and how to do it. He's not on your level of comprehension. He doesn't know the extent of the Luciferian's situation. He's going down because this is the closest route to get to Daniel. He gets intercepted, learns the hard way. So, on the High Council, you see he got caught. You say, okay, Michael, go down and take care of it. And that's, that's it. So, I'm reminded of Paul. Paul not shying away from anything. No matter what it was, all things work together for good for those who God love God and call according to his purpose. So this angel is above Paul and he knows this is going to work out, so he's not afraid of doing what is perceived as a mistake from my perspective, because I'm a human right now. But Mr. Jones, I you know, I, I'm just I'm I'm struggling with the um, the thing where I, this is supposedly me and I'm directing this angel knowing and I've already read it I know what's going to happen 
But I don't see me doing it that way, Mr. Jones. I, don't I do. Notice, it takes three weeks. Unless, just like Paul, the angel is going to get benefited. Exactly. It takes three weeks before the angel is finally released. That's you. You decided after three weeks. Why do you do that? Mm. Why don't you just send him immediately when you can see him got caught? So the factors in involved. Well, how about I just personally direct, deliver the message instead of using an angel? No. You don't do that. That's like saying, why not take the CEO to go down to the mail room? Well, apparently that's what happened in the bush. No. <laughs> three of them ah, in the bush. Three yeah. of them. <laughs> no, what's being said here? <clears throat> is you have a level of authority, you exercise that authority, the people under you do not have the knowledge that you have and are open to make mistakes. YHVH makes mistakes. So what do you think a lowly angel is capable of doing when he re runs into evil? That's part of what we're going to be doing as sons of God. You have to guide and direct the creation from wisdom. So you let him stew for three weeks and then you send Michael down to take care of business. When that angel is released, he's wiser than he was before. He's more capable not only receiving the revelation but ministering to Daniel the Revelation. Now, would you describe the angels' incarceration for three weeks as being the sufferings of Christ? In a way, because he runs into difficulty doing God's service. But also, <coughs> the angel, when you listen to what he's saying, he is nowhere um, moaning and groaning or <coughs> disparaging what he has experienced. He's processing it and coming to a conclusion in which he's now made adjustments. Right, as a result. Sure. Plus, I presume he would have gathered more information than he normally would have if he hadn't been. Before. No, he's only got a certain amount of revelation knowledge, but... No, I wasn't referring to the revelation. I'm talking about the, 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 the enemy capturing him and, and keeping him. Sure. Plus, he has desire he understands once he re he's released what he's got to do he got to find his way back he knows Michael's gonna be with him but he also knows he's enhanced because he's going to give Daniel the full revelation of what he has received he's got greater understanding than three weeks to uh, to ingest everything that he has been given to give to Daniel mm. three weeks he wouldn't have had and he got that in prison. Gotcha. So therefore, so there's factors in involved. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Mr. Smith, for waiting three weeks before you sent somebody down to help this angel. Okay, dope. I've been waiting for that. Thanks. That's, I wouldn't go that far. Man. But that's the uh, one. No, I was waiting, not you. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the one. Daniel, the eighth chapter, verse 15 to 19. Praise the Lord. Fabulous. 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 It's amazing. <coughs> it came to pass <coughs> when I, even I, Daniel, had seen the vision and sought for the meaning. So Daniel struggling to understand what it is he's been given. Then behold, there stood before me as the appearance of a man. This is an angel, Gabriel. Man, Ish, not man, Adam. And I heard a man's voice, an Adam's voice, between the banks of Ulai, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So we see this is Gabriel, right. who basically <coughs> is sent to the same country that the angel in Daniel 10 is sent to, to give to the same 
person who is in captivity in Persia. But at this point, Gabriel is in, imprisoned. He just goes straight down and gives Daniel what he's been given to give to him. Between Daniel 8 and Daniel 10, something has happened. Let me very quickly bring you back to the three-week theory. You should we understand that that angel was influenced to take the wrong path so that he could be enhanced by the three weeks incarceration? No, it was a decision he made. Okay. Remember, no he's over the same country. This time, th at this point, there's no problem. He didn't, he didn't, Gabriel, Gabriel doesn't get captured. No problem. He just goes and gives him the message. The next time, you got a three-week delay. Right. So something happened, which the inference is that the Luciferians did a location change or did something because maybe they see this taking place mm -hmm. and they say to themselves, well, hey, you know, we got to do something about this. All right. That Bray Smith. <laughs> we can't, yeah, I can't. We can't have him. <laughs> yeah, he's presenting too much of a headache for us. Yeah. Anyway, so you have two this, the translated men. One Adam, one Ina, uh, uh, Ish. <coughs> one's human, one's an angel. The angel is the messenger dispatched by the human. I heard a man's voice mm -hmm. between the banks of Uline, which called and said, Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So what we find here, the man, the Adam, is not on earth. He doesn't see, I, I saw a man <coughs> by the banks of Ula. He says, I heard a man's voice, and the man's voice is talking to the angel. So from heaven, he's speaking to Gabriel to give Daniel this revelation knowledge. But since this could be a pillar angel, why would the word Adam be used? Of the voice coming out of the heavens, why would it be an Adam voice? It wouldn't be a pillar angel because the, the, the glorification has to take place. Yet. Okay, so it has to be a, a teacher. It's a yeah. Right. It's but, a priest uh, star. So he's still called Adam at that point. Sure. All right. Even though he will never again reside anywhere near the earth. But it's giving you his origin. Okay. The Holy Spirit is giving us the understanding of our destiny. Right. Over the angels. Verse 17. So he, Gabriel, came near where I stood. And when he came, I was afraid and fell upon my face. But he said unto me, Understand, O son of man, for the time of the end shall be the vision. Then he goes on to give him an understanding of what he has been dispatched to give him. What we find here is <coughs> the authority is going to be given to the sons of Adam who are the prototokes. Authority over angels, archangels, Authority to instruct the creation. Authority to dispatch to the whatever corner of the heavens that need to receive revelation. Knowledge to prepare the creation for events that are going to take place. Mm -hmm. Which brings us to the next principle. Scripture indicates after the rapture. <coughs> now we're looking at when they're glorified. The difference between the gathering and the rapture is that the gathering gives them authority over the creation. The rapture takes them beyond the creation, from the creation into the Creator, and expands them into infinity. Scripture indicates after the rapture they will be the dispatchers of the angels who make the end time proclamations. They're going to be the movers and shakers of the book of Revelation giving instruction 
giving comprehension, giving direction to all that participate in the tribulation era. With the exception of the Father, the sons are given the whole ball of wax to take care of by the Father. That's why you never hear the Father giving a command. The most that you hear of is the Son making a proclamation. And that's it. Everything else are the prototokens sons. We see examples of that. Turn to Revelation, the 10th chapter, verses 1 to 4. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. So this is a dawn star. This, I believe, is YHVH himself, the creator of the human race, the mover and shaker, of Genesis, the second chapter, given authority over <coughs> the physical universe. This is YHVH, mm -hmm. who's calling the shots, the God of the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. He's now a messenger for the Prototokis sons. He comes down from heaven, he's got a book in his hand, the book is open, which means as he's descending, he's reading the book. He's getting revelation knowledge. Why? Because he's got to make a proclamation from the book. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. Cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth, and when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices, and when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write, and I heard a voice, a voice. Who was the voice? Any idea? Exactly. The guy that sent the angel. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. Well, he talks about the seven thunders. Why? Because he has dispatched the angel with the instruction of what to say when he reads it in the book. The angel reads it, and the book is saying, you make this pronouncement. He makes a pronouncement. He makes a pronouncement. <clears throat> it sets things in motion. And John, you know, he's been instructed, right, what he sees and he hears. So he writes it down. And the voice has authority to restrict any and everything that is not germane to that particular time. So he tells John, don't write it, seal it up. It's not for now. And then he goes on. Verse 8. And the voice. Who's the voice? The Can't hear you. Me. Ah, yeah. ah, yeah. That's All it. Right. All right. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book, which is open, which is open. So the angel is still reading it. In the hand of the angel, which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. It shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. So it's almost like he reluctantly gives him the book mm -hmm. because he's you know he wants to see more about what's what's taking place, but he knows the book can only be under the authority of the prototokus. That's why he tells John, "You must prophesy before many people mm -hmm. out of this book." So we see all the administration control in the hands of the prototokus, whether glorified or whether still on the earth. So the book tells YHVH when to speak and what to speak. Mm -hmm. Exactly. 
but the book only pertains to a certain degree to him. Sure. <coughs> the majority of it is John. Because the angel tells him, well, you gotta, you got to prophesy what's in this book. So the book's really not for the angel, it's for John. To, pro to, to proclaim to the churches. You see how the Father has enclosed all revelation for his sons. It's the sons that are going to have to dispatch this to the creation, to the angels, whatever, because the Father has mandated from eternity that this is going to be the authority of his sons in his only begotten son. It's a family affair, as Sly and the Family Stone used to say. It's going to remain and retain a family affair. Now, <clears throat> What we find is very important. Look at verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he, the seventh angel, shall begin to sound, the seventh angel is a prototokos, the mystery of God should be finished, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. What's being said here? The prophets were the first to receive revelation knowledge at the establishment of the churches 2,000 years ago. The prophets had all the revelation knowledge. The prophets disseminated the revelation knowledge to the apostles and to the churches. Turn to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, 1st chapter. Starting in verse 10. <clears throat> of which salvation or deliverance the prophets have inquired. Have inquired. The prophets research. The prophets basically <clears throat> investigated and pursued revelation knowledge. And the prophets were greatly rewarded. <clears throat> of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you? So what's he saying here? The prophets sacrificially petitioned the Lord to give them revelation that would pertain to the future of the church. Receive the fullness of revelation. Passed it on to those that were in their immediate presence to give to everybody. <clears throat> everybody that heard passed it on until all the apostles and all the churches received. This is what Peter is saying. So that the church would understand what it's suffering, what it would have to endure, what the path would be to receive the rewards commensurate with their calling. <clears throat> of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesies of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. In other words, the Holy Spirit was showing them the revelation of the things that were going to take place, the sufferings and the glory, so that they could pass it on to the churches. When it testified beforehand, beforehand, 
the sufferings of Christ. This is not retort. This is not. <clears throat> this is not saying that the prophets foretold the sufferings that Christ would go through before he went through them. It's talking about the sufferings that the church would go through before it went through them. Christ has already gone through the sufferings, overcome them, and gone to heaven. That's why they have the Spirit of Christ in them to give them revelation knowledge. And the glory that should follow. <clears throat> unto whom it was revealed that not only unto themselves, the prophets and those they taught, but unto us, us, the apostles, and the remnant of the churches, they did minister the things which are now revealed, or now reported unto you, by them that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost, sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. The angels are observing all this, they're not participating, not receiving anything, because it's not for them. It's for the prototokis, teachers to give to the churches to enable them to understand the master plan of God. Turn back to Revelation. <clears throat> Tenth chapter. Here we see one of the revelation that was given to the prophets. Verse 7. <clears throat> but in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he, the seventh angel, shall begin to sound... The mystery of God should be finished as He, God, the Son, hath declared to His servants the prophets when the prophets diligently searched to find out revelation knowledge of the destiny of the churches. This is one of the revelation that was given to them. When the seventh angel sounds, the mystery will be complete. The mystery will be complete by the proclamation of the seventh angel. The prophets took that and they passed it on to the other offices of the church. Why? So the church would understand the plan of God and be prepared for it. <clears throat> now you see this. I'm going to give you closing two scriptures, two visions, one seen by John, the same vision seen by Daniel. One complicate, one complements the other. This is complicated. Complements the other. Turn to Revelation 10, verse 2. <clears throat> Angel comes down. He had in his hand a little book. Open and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth. <clears throat> and then he makes a proclamation. Turn to Daniel, 12th chapter. We're going to read verses 5 to 7. <clears throat> Daniel speaks to the angel. The angel finishes giving him the plan of God. In other words, the events that are going to take place leading into the <clears throat> end of the tribulation period. After it's over, Daniel makes his dialogue referring to the vision that he had seen. Then I, Daniel, looked, and behold, <coughs> there stood other two. So he sees the angel giving him the revelation knowledge. 
and in the background <coughs> he looks into beyond the angel that's talking to him a vision that takes place thousands of years later on the earth same vision John sees in Revelation 10th chapter I Daniel looked and behold there stood other two and one on this side of the bank of the river the other on that side of the bank of the river one said to the man clothed in linen which is upon the waters of the river how long shall it be to the end of these wonders and I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand and his left hand into heaven and swear by him that lived forever that it should be for a time, times, and half time. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. <coughs> <coughs> this is the angel in Revelation 10. It comes down and puts one foot on the land, the other foot on the water, <coughs> raises his hand and makes a declaration that it should be time no longer. <coughs> what he's saying here, when the angel makes that declaration, that's the time in which the seven last years of the tribulation period are going to be inserted into the time flow. You see it right here. It says, <coughs> Verse 7, I heard the man clothed in linen which was upon the waters of the river when he held up his right hand <coughs> and his left hand into heaven. Swear by him that liveth forever and ever that it shall be for a time, times, and half. That's the seven <coughs> years of which you have two three and a half year periods. <coughs> time times in half a time <coughs> <coughs> plus a time. The time is three and a half years. The second half is <coughs> time times in half time which don't have days, minutes, or hours. They have <coughs> eternal significance which God puts in. <clears throat> the first three and a half gives you three, 360 days. <clears throat> the second half gives you time, times, and half time. When you read Revelation 12 about the woman flees, the first half is three and a half years, 360 days. Second, she flees for time, times, and half time. <clears throat> this last seven years. So the tribulation period, we find, <clears throat> is going to be about 40 years the last seven years are going to be the seven years that everybody's touting about that they believe is going to constitute the whole tribulation period. It doesn't. It's only the last part of the tribulation period in which everything climaxes in that period. The Great Tribulation. <clears throat> All this it's going to be put in the hands of the Prototokist teachers to teach the creation. <coughs> to teach those of the human race that will be counted worthy to hear it. And to teach other saints. Okay, Mr. Jones. We understand the synopsis of what you're, you're giving us. We see that the Father has done it all for the sons. Okay? We know when the sons liberate the creation from Satan's grip, there's going to be a, a tremendous celebration. <coughs> Has God done his best work and it's over? Or is there is he gonna is is the best work he's done us? Exactly. Okay. Is anything better? No. Is nothing? nothing no, better? no, no, no. Okay. Because to say something better, you would have to say there's something better than God. Because God's creating the sons in his own image. We are going to be in a creative capacity. Yes. <clears throat> you can't do anything that's not great, because to do that is to say 
you're doing something that's less than what God would do. We see Jesus, he says, Man, work shall these do than what I've done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, doesn't mean greater in quality, it means greater in <coughs> quantity, greater in <coughs> kind. <coughs> you're going to do other things that he didn't do. That's the point I'm getting to. Is the greatest thing that's been created, already created, that's it? Or is there something else? Tell me. You can't look at it that way because <clears throat> everything you do has greatness. That's to say, <clears throat> does God do some work greater than work that He did before? <clears throat> no. <clears throat> everything He does has a stamp of greatness. I'm starting to understand the Father's given me a reprieve from my human thinking to understand you can't outdo God. You can desire to be equal to Him. But <coughs> what's going to be done, the greatness of it all, He's already done. Yes. We are going to continue in His footsteps. We do nothing of our own, even when we're glorified. <coughs> That's why the Father, it says the Father will be all in all. The Father is replicating Himself. We, <coughs> if we begin to think of terms of us, then immediately you're limiting yourself because you're putting yourself outside of God. You can't do that. 